this sample case we will design um, all on six thimble crown implant bridge by using the chain mode and the smile design and in one design session we will also design the secondary crowns on these symbols. I recommend to use for this case the DES NBBM multi desktop scan abutment and the proportion guide 1.25. The job definition looks like this. So we have we are working with virtual wax up, uh, screw retained on the implants and we work with a pre-op. We have a pre-op scan of a, of a full denture. We design the wax up digitally and we design the gingiva as well. On the pontics we simply have a wax up pontic, we design it digitally and we have a pre-op scan as well. For the smile design we have two pictures here from our software development manager uh, Paul Schnitzspan and we directly start with the design. As you can see here, the pre-op scan is not at the correct position. So this can happen if you do, as you do two different scans in your scanner. And if you move the model jig in your scanner, or if you change the scan height in your scanner. Therefore, we, we will do a, a registration here. I prefer to move it a little bit. This makes it much easier. And then we click on automatically and we do a three point registration and we will register the pre op and we will match it to the jaw scan. Okay, we proceed to the next step. We start the virtual articulator. We leave the gap. And I'd like to show a new feature here in uh, Valletta. In the choose which teeth influence articulator movement, you can now uh, paint parts to exclude. You could also um mark teeth by a click so painting looks like this you just mark a region or by click you just define an entire tooth and automatically the entire tooth will be brushed and all the brushed areas will be ignored when doing the articulator movements for this case we will not need this so therefore we will reset it and we close this dialog yeah we can now set all the parameters of our physical articulator here in our virtual articulator we can choose between different articulators uh, and then we start the articulator movements then we can close this dialog and all the movements will be so will be saved in the background of the software. We proceed to the next step. And here we select and register the implant libraries. I've saved them already into my favorites. It's the DES and BBM multi desktop scan abutment. And we choose the RP. And it's important to register the correct position here on 217. Control and spacebar can be used to proceed to the next one. By the way, if you hold control while clicking on best fit matching, you will see a color scale showing the deviation of the matching result.
yeah, in this step we can define the emergence profiles. I will skip this here because I don't want to design individual emergence profile on each tooth. And in the next step, I will show you how you can design a circular emergence profile, which is a shape I'd recommend here for such kind of restoration. But first of all, we will do the tooth placement. In the first step, we will do a functional tooth placement by using the pre-op, and later on, we will use the smile design to do an aesthetical tooth placement of the anteriors. Yeah, this is a perfect case to use the chain mode. Usually, I do a raw placement first with the chain mode by using those UFOs here. I start with one of the last molars, then I fix this side, take the one on the other side, okay, then so control and with shift. Control and Shift, I change the size of the entire tooth bow. Then I place the canines. And again, with Control and Shift, I can change the length a little bit, increase the length. I place the canine. I fix the canine. Then the other canine. And here you see that if, for example, you fix it before you move it, then you can move it easier, but in this case, this tooth will not be scaled automatically. Yeah. Place this canine. Okay, let's fix it. Then we will place the anteriors. Try to do a symmetrical setup here. Then the posteriors like this as I already said I only use the chain mode for an for an initial placement then I go to the simple mode and then I do the fine tweaking on the placement of each individual tooth. Yeah you might take or you might invest a little time here. As for the timbles, timble crowns, this is important. Because you should, I recommend not to use the free form before you reduce or before you use the cutbacks timbles. You can also use here this color scale to check the contacts with the antagonist. And as I said, I recommend not to use the, the freeform nor the adaptation because the thimble cutbacks are just a static reduction of the initial tooth library and freeform will not be taken in account when the symbols are calculated. Therefore, it's maybe better to place them a little bit below the pre-op, just keep some desired contact points. You could also display the antagonist. Okay, let's verify again with the pre-op. Yeah, we just use the pre-op for rough placement and later we do in the smile design aesthetical placement. Okay, now we continue.
yeah and here we can now design the uh, emergence profiles as I said I want to design circular ones for this kind of restoration so therefore I just use one dot here and pull it a little bit outwards and check it with the height of my of the gingiva. The next one Last one, and now I just adjust the shape. I use this button to create an entire convex shape, and then I use the lower slider to create a kind of concave shape here at the bottom of the emergence profile. Yeah, that's how I would design them. Okay, let's proceed to the next step. Yeah, now we are in the freeforming step and now we can go to the expert mode and work uh, with the digital smile design. Okay, now we go to the expert mode. We go to the tools and we choose digital smile design. Then we start by loading a retracted image. And we use the pre-op to do the registration between the 3D mesh and the 2D picture. I usually use the cusps, cusp tips of the canines. The bigger the distance between the two points, the more accurate is the scaling of the picture. result is already quite good. We only just have to rotate the model. We do that with the right mouse. Yeah, like this. Almost perfect, just some fine tweaking here. Okay. Then we proceed to the next step. Now we load the smile image. This step is much easier because here you have only to register 2D and 2D. Okay, perfect. Then we draw a lip line. Okay. And we click on the patient's right eye and then the left eye to do the orientation of the 2D picture and now we can place different helper lines, proportion guides and smile curves. I use here the 1.25 and I place it in the center and I change the size of it. And then the 
curve here. I usually also verify this with the smile picture. Yeah, great. Then we proceed to the next step. And here we do now fine tweaking or fine tuning of the anterior tooth placement. And we can do that now in 2D. But first I only choose the anteriors and then we can now place the anteriors. And just use one. can also use here the 3D options. This. And in each moment you can also have a look at the preview and you can also work in real time with your preview. You can even improve the result of your preview by going to the next step. And here you have a color picker and you can adjust the colors of your tooth rendering. I usually choose here some this more orange area. This one, yeah, perfect. And then tooth highlight color, I choose the light color of my tooth. so bad. You can even go back and work now with this improved colors, your preview, and you can still do some changes. Okay, that's the result. Here you can now save this image to a file and send it to the patient, or to the dentist. When you are done, click on this button and this will close the smile design wizard. If later on you want to look the result again, just double click here on the picture and you will automatically get back the perfect orientation of the picture. Now we restart the wizard and the design will continue with the tooth rendering of the smile design. But we could also change that here in the true smile button. The true smile button with the right mouse click, you can even change to true smile or simply use the normal design mode. Okay, I recommend not to do too much freeform. As I already, already explained, this will not be taken in account when calculating the timber crowns. But in any case, I will adapt all the intersections, pontics, uh, the occlusal context and approximate context. Beforehand, I usually still... No, it's not required here. So I would maybe adjust here the basal parts, but, but as we create here a virtual gingiva, it's not required, then we just cut all intersections. Okay. And then we proceed to the next step. Thank <laughs> you. 
yeah, we skipped a step. Here we could adapt the pre-op. Here we could adapt the teeth to the pre-op, but this is not required. And then very important step now is to block out the model for the virtual uh, gingiva and wax up. Yeah, usually I'd recommend to use the default in search and direction. This is an average vector of all the different implant angles. And we simply click on apply. There are different parameters we can uh, use here. We can define an offset. We can define a smoothing, which would fill out concave areas. And we can also choose a milling compensation, which would avoid that you have two sharp edges on the bottom of your virtual gingiva. Okay, we can also freeform here, which means we could add additional wax to block out, or we could also remove wax here in regions um, where it has been blocked out, like this. But this is not required here, just to show. And then we proceed to the next step. And in this step, we will design the gingiva. I usually start here in the center by drawing a curve. You can still edit the curve. Now we can still adjust it and recompute again to make it here as short as possible. Okay, great. Then we proceed to the next step. Here we can freeform the gingiva. And with the small region functionality, I usually add some material here, especially to make sure that it's big enough. Okay. Yeah, in this step, we can now create the symbols by choosing the symbol cutback library and automatically the anatomical teeth will be adjusted or will be shrunk 
in a way that they look like a thimble. Yeah, here we would obviously have maybe a problem with our margin area. No problem. We can go to the expert mode and still do a change here in the tooth placement. And create more space here or make a shorter symbol. And we could also go back again and recompute the gingiva if really required. And now we also go back into the free form. In expert mode and we adjust again here the occlusal contact points. Okay. And then we restart the wizard. We are back in the shrinking step and we choose again the timbers. Yeah, and that looks much better now. We apply. And then we go to the next step. But before we do some freeforming on the thimbles, I go again into the expert mode and again to the tooth placement because now we can also move the thimbles and we can move them a little bit up to ensure that the margin line is correct. Or we can even do some adjustments for our insertion later. And we could also check the screw channels it makes sense also to display the anatomical shapes again those one looks good You could also move them all simultaneously a little bit in the occlusal direction. Yeah. Okay. And I'll open again the freeform gingiva mode. And here, again with the small region, I make sure that there's no overlapping here between the gingiva and my margin. Okay. Here we might have some troubles later, but we can arrange this in the free form of the thimble.
And now we will go back to the wizard and do some freeforming on our symbols. So first of all, I'd like to solve this issue here. No problem. Okay. Some material like this. Then it's okay. To cover the minimum thickness of the implant geometry. So here's also still issue. Okay. Then we will check now if there's enough space to the anatomical shape. Yeah, for example, here we could reduce symbol. We can also fix the equator. Or we could also use the entire tooth mode. And of course also the free form. Yeah, you can also choose or use the the rich. I use this usually to create kind of bridges here to design a protection again rotation, especially for the interiors. Yeah, like this. Okay. Yeah, here in the connector step, we can now delete all the connectors with one click, like this, and then we do a final check. Yeah, maybe, maybe we could go again into the gingiva design mode and just Uh, in the gingiva free in the freeform gingiva, I'm sorry, and just do a small correction. Yeah. Okay. And then we proceed in the wizard, and now the virtual wax up will be generated. This might take some time. And we have accelerated the process here a little bit. Yeah, the virtual wax up has been created now. This is how it looks like. It has been also adapted on the gingiva. And now we can proceed and we can still do some freeforming here on the entire construction. 
and this is a step which I usually use to do uh, to create some space between the gingiva and uh, and uh, the design and the construction to have enough space to add some ceramic. Okay, this is how it looks like. Then you can still do some freeform here. I usually just smooth a little bit, especially here, this edge. Yeah, now before I proceed and before I finish the restoration and before I will export it with the screw channels, I will save this framework as an SGL. So this is now a workaround and I will use it in a second step as a jaw scan to create the secondary crowns on it. It's very important to save it manually now for two reasons. The first reason is um, the screw channels has not been created yet and uh, if you save it manually the, orient the restoration will be saved in the orientation of the scan data. Uh, but before I do that I usually uh, go to the dental DB before then I duplicate the case I check also the scan data Then I go into this project folder and I copy this path. And then I go back to the cut design. And now we will save this restoration into the new project folder as a jaw scan by doing a right click on it and save to file. And we paste the path of the new project folder here. And we will save this as the upper jaw. Okay. And then we hide everything here and we just display the anatomical teeth and then we save them as a box up. Save scene as by clicking in the background. Choose STL. Go into the same project folder and we call it WaxUp. Yeah. And then we can now finish this restoration here. And in the very last step, we will um, we will uh, switch off all the screw channels here, and we save and export the file.
Now back in the dental DB, we will change the job definition for the secondary structure. We choose here instead of screw retained wax up, we choose just a reduced uh, wax up, or we can even better choose anatomic wax up. And we say no implant, no pre op, and we scan the wax up. And we apply this to the entire tooth bow. Then we uncheck all the connectors here. And then we start the design. And we will load the wax up. You see that the exported restoration is now our jaw scan, and jaw scan and wax up are at the correct position. We define now all the margin lines. Okay, I've accelerated this step a little bit, so we defined all the margin. We proceed to the next step. The cement gap settings. Then we proceed again to the next step. And now the wax up will be calculated, so the software will take our imported anatomical teeth um, as a wax up and they will be adapted to the margin line. Yes, we have accelerated the process again because this might take some time. Here's the result. Now we can still do some free forming if required on the anatomical teeth, for example. Just a small adjustment here. Then we proceed to the last step. And that's the result. So we have now 14 single crones that can be milled together with the primary single crone implant bridge. Thank you for watching.